the outer court to the holy place. Wait, I gotta make sure we're muted for that. Past the brazen altar, Lord, I long to see your face. Take me by the crowds of people and the priest to speak your praise. I hung and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found in one place. Take me in to the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood. You go to spirit breakout. So, so you sing it, it twice. You sing it twice and then okay. you go. Spirit breakout. To D E minor. Break our walls to B minor down. seven. Spirit Sing that, you sing that. 
sing that twice. Okay. But it's, what? You sing that twice and then you go to King Jesus. song up there, though? Okay, we got we got we got that one. Yeah. Got it. Uh, what song did I pick? <laughs> I picked the anthem, "Take Me In," "Spirit Breakout." No. Uh, I'll pick one more. We'll do nothing. I hold on. One right here. Yeah. Well, you got to use it to make sure I look pretty. It'll be okay. <laughs> I work hard now. Got 40 seconds. Checking the mic. Check, check. One, two. ICCM Life Center. We got Pastor Moni in the building, y'all. We got Pastor C. We got Brother Mac on the back. We see you, sir. We got Caleb on them strings, and we got Miss Nash over here having her business. Appreciate everybody. Smile, somebody. Hey. There we go. We almost got 13 seconds. Smile, somebody. God's in control. <laughs> smile big. Let me see your teeth now. When you guys are up there, I want y'all smiling now when y'all worshiping, okay? Don't smile? Okay. Let us, let us know when we're on. We got a little second. Still live, guys. Caleb? Oh, whoops, we've been live. <laughs> 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 All right. 
But can we turn it on this front camera for us? Are we good? We out? All right, here we go. ICCM Life Center, how y'all doing tonight? I'm Chris Ballinger, one of the ministers here for Overcomer Service. Go ahead and give it up for yourself. Y'all sound great out there. I'm going to open up in prayer. God's in control. He's going to go over and show up for us, y'all. We already get ready to rock. I see y'all. I got one scripture right here real quick, y'all. It says Isaiah 41.10. It was the scripture today. If you got the Bible app, if you don't got it, download it ASAP. Oh, that, that was good right there, right? It says it in Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I just want you to know that night that God's in control. This is our overcomer service, and we're going to go ahead and make sure that we don't be dismayed and that we stay strengthened in our word. And we're just going to go ahead and open in prayer. Go ahead and bow your head. Close your eyes. All right. Close, close your eyes. There it is. Close your eyes. All right, y'all. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for showing up on our behalf, Father. We thank you that you are ultimately in control. That your word declares that you would not leave us nor forsake us. That you give us courage in our weakness, Father. And you are the one that makes a way where there seems to be none. Father, we thank you for the people that were around tonight. We thank you for this overcomer service. And we thank you for what you're doing in our world, Father. For we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all ready to get it in? Y'all ready to get it in? Here we go, y'all. Let's have some church.
Sing with us. Is right. Everything about you is right. Come on, put your dancing shoes on now. Well, let me hear you say, bless, we're blessed.
All right. Thursday overnight is like snatch you on the ball. You on the ball, Nash. All by yourself. All right, y'all. My name is Lily, and I'm here to do the announcements. Are y'all looking at the uh, encourage every day, 1130? Please share, okay? Because it's some powerful stuff that she's talking about, detoxing the brain. I think they finna start it next week. So if you need the, uh, the notes, the questions, text Pastor Monica or either text the church. Give us a call. Uh, Tuesdays, 11. Tuesdays night, it's me and some women's support group, 630 they in the living room, and they're doing some powerful stuff. They're giving out some powerful information about how to stay strong in this time of trial. Because I know we're scared, because we don't know what tomorrow might bring us. But uh, as he say, fear not, because he is with us, no matter what. Uh, Thursday's night, over, Overcomers Night, here at, six, at 7 o'clock. We in the ministry. Thanks, God, for tonight that I'm able to be here. Hey! So I give a shout out to all of y'all. This I hope y'all are tuning in, watching us, uh, and also share every night. Friday night, y'all know it's prayer. Please come, y'all. If y'all don't do nothing but stand outside. Last week it was powerful because we had a team outside. I mean it. It was so powerful last week. I even was crying. Okay, like wow. So um. Just, just continue to stay prayed up and know that God is with us no matter what we're going through. And he will get us through this. And we all is in this together. So thank y'all. Hey, hey, what's up, family? Overcomers night up in here. Coming to you live from Life Center to all up in your crib. It's party time. It's time to worship the Lord. Amen. Time to move forward. Get it done. God is so good. He loves you guys. We're getting closer and closer to getting out of Coronaville. <laughs> you know the deal. We're tired of that, man. I'm tired of it. I'm telling you right now. W wasted away in Coronaville. I know it. I was thinking about that today, but it was wasted away in Margaritaville. Not but uh, we've been there and done going. that, so Not we ain't going. Go yeah, now it's Coronaville. We ain't going back no more. <laughs> Overcomers night. But if Coronaville keeps happening, I might have to have a margarita. No, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, all right. Hey, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't you give up because he got the hookup. Hey, neighbor, you need to smile because you're looking real good today. I know I am. I checked that mirror about 20 times. That was a joke, Randy. I'm going to check it again when I get back. Joke. Oh, joke. I, I have one next week. <laughs> next week you'll be recovering from surgery. Well, I still have a joke for you. All right. <laughs> right. I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be on live anyway. So, huh? Come on, y'all. He put me on the spot right there. I had one, but it's gone. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a minute now for me to catch them, 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 the words and your thinking and all that stuff. No worries. Yeah. But, hey, that's part of becoming a senior citizen. <laughs> hey, you get uh, cheap coffee at McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> okay, okay, I got to get to I got to get to the verse. Mark 12, 41 through 44. Jesus, don't do it. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more in the treasury than all of the others. 
they gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. So she was all in. She didn't have nothing left. She put it in. She knew Jesus was going to get it done. You know what I mean? So uh, anyway, we love you guys. Go to changeinourcity.org. Donate button. Oh, we got a drop box in the back door. So uh, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for tonight. Thank you for your favor and your mercy, your grace. I ask that you bless the offering, multiply it, God. I pray you watch over our families, that you give us favor, God. Uh, keep, keep your angels and camp around us and your hedge of protection. And Jesus, be a fence all around us. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.
You're the sun to shine. You were born for such a time as this. He's calling, wake up, child. It's your time to shine. You were born for such a time as this. He's calling, wake up, child. It's your time to shine. You were born for such a time as this. He's calling, wake up, child. It's your time to shine. You were born for such a time as this. Charlie, I like that thing on your chin. What's that growing on your chin there, Charlie? the outer courts into the holy place past the brazen altar Lord I want to see your face test you by the crowds of people and the priests who sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness but it's only found one place take me in to the holy of holies take me my lips, here I am. To the holy place, past the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people, and the priest to sing your praise. the blood of 
me in his arms and out in the place where I'm changed
understanding My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven I need not on my own understanding My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, I worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day. Dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I worship. It's testimony time. (laughs) 
I know some of you out there have testimonies, and uh, so we're going to pull them up and see what we got. Testimonies. <laughs> Testimonicas. <laughs> lift my life up in about 1998 pastor monica pastor chris two of the nicest pieces you, people you're going to ever meet on this earth who can really talk directly to the world help me out in plenty of ways so when i got to give something back it's not money you can't put a price on it when god puts you on this earth to do something deliver a message can't nobody judge you where you come from if you make sense you can help someone. Yeah. So as a person, a black American person, I would love to see all people of all nations come together and believe we can help each other fight this situation we in. Don't be afraid to stand up, be a man, be a real woman, be a real person. Because the only way we can get through this here is together. Yeah. We turn our back on each other, that's not the answer. The answer is God, the only way, the right way, the way to believe in. Because we make mistakes in life, yeah. but we can always correct ourselves. We got to believe. So I'm going to believe. I love ICCM, Life Center Church. Made me a true believer in my life. I'm 59. I was probably 32, 33 when I first came around the church. Uh, over here on 19, and I believe 11th Avenue, in back of SA. Always welcome people. So you know I go back. Okay, when I say 91, 92, 93, 94, when he had a little house service, <laughs> God worked miracles. He put them on Park Avenue when he said there wouldn't be no miracle there. It could have been evaporated. It could have been torn down. They worked miracles. That church is opened up from my bandit warehouse, whatever warehouse it was, God worked a miracle. Amen. I was in the workhouse in 1997. I got out in June of 1998. You know who helped me? This lady here. And I see, see him. So I know miracles work through God. Don't ever give up on your dream. It's nobody perfect, but there's always someone who care. And I care. Pastor Monica care. You people care. So I love y'all. Help me in my life. God is real. Wake up, America. Come together and come together and help and support each other. Amen. God bless everybody. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Hi, everybody. Thank you, thank you, Sionia. From God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that you all are staying encouraged. Amen. You know, despite whatever it may feel like or look like or... You may think it's like he don't think like we do amen for us heaven is higher than earth so is his thoughts higher than ours he's good he's a he's a good good father you know despite of whatever I may see, I don't want to see, I don't want to see this, this in, in, in my normal mind, in my natural mind, so to speak. I mean, I want to, I want to see it in, in, in God's eyes, from God's perspective. You know, he says, trust in him. And, you know, everything is close. He's not. <laughs> you made it. Be loved. You've made it. I miss you guys so much. And I, I just I just see that day when we'll all be able to be together again. Amen. And I just thank God in, in the moment. You know what's, what's amazing to me? Thank you, Lord. But it's just so astounding to me. Is 
this teaches me a sense of gratefulness. I'm talking a, a real sense of gratefulness because the things that we were taking for granted He shut things down. He shut things down so that we can yearn and thirst for him. God, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I just want you all to be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Because even though you walk through the valley, the shadow of death, there will be no weapons formed against you that will be able to prosper. Even though we walk through the valley, the shadow of death, <laughs> I will fear no evil. I love you all. I thank you all for being part of my life. And I'm so grateful for you all. Be blessed. Thank you. What's happening? She's leaving to go to her friend's house. Okay. I'll be right back. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> you fishing, man? You like you fishing? Yeah, you we, ate, we ate both of them. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey you guys. Give me your testimony. Tell Caleb now. Hey, Caleb. To do your work? Yes, I did my work this morning. I did all of them. Well, did you open the videos? Yes. You did? What was he talking about? Who, Caleb? Was I talking about that work? <laughs> that work. Oh, I didn't do that work yet. <laughs> talking about get, what? I'm finna go do the website when I come back home. I'm finna go do it. Where are you going? I'm finna go, to, I'm finna go run to the store. It's a really good, um, you did a really great job putting this thing together. You should really watch it and do the work. When we come back next week, we're gonna make sure you're done. Hey, what's up, girl? What's up? Church open back open. How you tell us? How you doing? We both know. They say everything's supposed to be open on the 24th. May, April. The 4th. May, 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 May. May the But 4th. if they don't extend it. Right. But, um. You guys ready to come back to church? School year? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Pastor Monica. It's such a sweet day out. I really miss you so much. Hope you're having a blessed day. Bless, bless, bless day. Thank you. God bless. Go ahead. Go um, God's been good to me. Um, I've been, I've been making it. I've been having food to eat and taking good care of my kids and stuff. And I'm not working right now, but I'm going to be working again soon, so. Yep. Caleb, want to know how you're doing? Yeah. Bring some pizza here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what, you want to lose some testimony, see how you're doing? You've been doing good? You've been watching us on uh, Facebook? You know? Did you do your homework? <laughs> Yeah. You did? Say you hi, did Caleb. The, the, the youth uh, hi, homework? Caleb. Hey, Caleb. <laughs> Where's the little one at? The little one? He's in the house somewhere. Okay. We're going to draw some pieces. We're going to see how y'all doing. Let you we're know we love we're, you guys. We're, we love you too. We miss you, Pastor. Yeah, that's why we have to come yeah. and check up and make sure you're okay. Yeah, we're good. We're moving. Really? For probably this month. Where else? Oh, Pastor, you, you, you want to take my new number down? Yeah, okay. where are you moving to? And uh, this is my testimony. I ran into my armor bearer and Iffy's foster mom. <laughs> so there we are, like two bandits. Amen. Amen. So does anyone else here have a testimony? Somebody want to testify of God's goodness? Of his mercy, of his grace.
I mean, there's like what? Where are, where are my dogs? <laughs> Maybe they'll testify. <laughs> somebody, somebody. I can't wait till you guys are back here in the seats. We can sit six feet apart. We can wear masks. We can wear gloves. We can wear the whole thing if we have to. What do they call those? Asthmat suits. I'm going to order a bunch of those so we can come to church and we'll sit here in our asthmat suits. <laughs> we got to do what we got to do to do this thing. Amen. We're still trying to figure it out what this is going to look like because we got to make it work. Amen. So we got a, a treat today. See, you see what ha happened was, <laughs> are you out there? <laughs> Sean, I'm talking to you. We're looking for you. We're coming for you. You better pull it together. We're coming. So, give it up for Caleb. Uh, this is a, uh, before I, I do the, my, my preaching thing, this is a song that I wrote recently. It goes along with the thing that we're preaching about today. Uh, we'll see if I can play it right. I'm not good at my own part. divine grace eternal grace sublime unfair basis for my faith that all my wrongs have gone away I don't need Nothing to try, just accept or deny. Those are the options you provide. No act of work could supplement grace divine. Love gives some deny. Free others for yourself. Accept grace divine. Love gives some accepts. Love gives some deny. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Accept grace divine. Love gives some accept. Love gives some deny. Love others. Accept grace divine. He gives some accept. He gives. 
some deny we fell with the spirit except grace divine the God gives some accept the God gives some deny we are the perfect lover except grace divine Stand up. <laughs> All right. All right. I don't know if you could understand what I was singing about, but, <laughs> but, but that, that song's about grace, and that's what I'm talking about today. Um, we're talking about grace. Um, so grace is easiest to define as this, as God's choice to forgive us despite us not deserving forgiveness, right? And that, that's kind of an amazing concept, right, that a person can simply know that they have been forgiven by God. They don't need to worry, and they don't need to make God love them more. They don't need to earn a special amount of forgiveness for a certain sin, right? God has simply given us the gift of grace through Jesus, and he gave it to us as a way to be saved. Um, the worst person in the world and the best person in the world, they are saved the same way, right? There's a no special requirement for one person to be saved and for the other to be saved, right? They, everyone is saved the same belief. And that applies to each of us, right? No matter what our pasts were like, no matter what mistakes we make now, what mistakes we might make in the future, we can have faith that we are still saved despite those mistakes, right? That grace is a gift God has chosen to give us simply because he can and because he wanted to, right? Grace is something that he gives. It's not something we can earn, right? It's his to give, and he gives it freely. And that can be a really difficult concept to really grasp and apply to ourselves. Like, we can understand it, but then when it comes time to apply that to the way we live, that's very difficult because usually there's kind of two directions that we kind of take grace. And one direction is we can kind of convince ourselves that we can literally do anything and it doesn't matter because God will forgive you, and technically that's true, and we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> But we can convince ourselves that that's the way God maybe wants us to live. I don't know what we convince ourselves. But we take that thought to an extreme sometimes. And then the other direction is kind of the opposite, um, which is we kind of sometimes ignore grace. Sometimes we believe that in order for our salvation to be valid, we have to live as close to perfect as we can. Um, so we're going to talk about the, the first thing I mentioned later um, because... I think that's the more challenging thought to counter. I think that's the more challenging one because it's not necessarily incorrect. So it's, it's how do you kind of work with that in our heads. So we're going to tackle that one a little bit later. But both of these ideas, both of these ways of taking grace, they both have something in common and that they each ignore the wisdom and the discernment given to us through the Bible and the Holy Spirit, right? Um, um, in one view, we, we ignore, like, a potential spiritual or physical harm um, because we can. And in the other, 
We live in fear and bondage to the law because we're afraid of going to hell for making a mistake. So both views separate us from Christ because instead of relying on him to guide us, um, we rely on old thinking and human judgment. And these modes of thought stop us from truly knowing the character of God and loving him because um, b- loving him because of the joy that his truth and law brings, right? Not because we're afraid of what his truth and what his law brings. So we all for all pray to both views from time to time. So we're going to talk a little bit about both. So first we're going to talk about um, the view of grace that kind of just ignores, sometimes when we just ignore grace. I got this Bible verse here. It's Romans 3, 20 through 24. Romans 3, 20 through 24. You should probably pull it up. There's a lot here. Okay. (laughs) Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So, Just real quick, in case you don't know, when the Bible talks about the law, it's usually referring out to the rules like in the Bible itself. So when when we talk about the law, we're really talking about how the Bible says we're supposed to live. Um, So that's what we mean. So uh, so verse number 20, it should make it really clear what the purpose the law has in the life of a Christian. It says, Through the law, we become conscious of our sin. So what it doesn't say is that by following the law, we obtain salvation. But it also doesn't say the law has no purpose to us, right? It says the law makes us aware of our sin. And I think um, that awareness can be difficult for everyone, right? We might feel like a magnifying glass is like pointed at you and suddenly you can feel like you're a terrible person because you might read all this stuff and you might think, well, I did all this. Like, I'm a horrible person. But the thing to realize that the law is not there to condemn you. The law is a tool, right? It's a tool that God has given you to wield wisely, right? Most of the condemnation that you feel, it comes from within our own selves, right? Others may put us down, but ultimately, like, we make the choice to listen to those people. So, Right, in a sense, sometimes we even make others' people opinion equal to the tools God has equipped us with, but that's like not what we're talking about now. What we're talking about right now is 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 this idea that that the law is there to help you see the sin that of your past life, to help you see the things that are wrong. It's not there to condemn you. And how do we know that it's not there to convent, condemn us? It says this. The next part of the verse is this. Apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known. Given through faith in Jesus. I'm kind of skipping little bits just to put them together. So it says, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known. Given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Okay, so what are those three things say? So first it says this. The righteousness of God has been shown to us separately from the law. So in other words, right, the law, the Bible, like the things it talks about, how to live, that's the prophets testifying to us. Or in other words, they're trying to explain to us what the righteousness of God is like, right? They're trying to explain to us how to live a holy and righteous life. But this Bible verse is saying that explanation, though, is not his righteousness, the explanation of what his righteousness looks like is not actually his righteousness, right? His righteousness is not something you read about and put into action for yourself. His righteousness, it says, is a gift that he has given us. It says that, that righteousness has been given through faith in Christ Jesus to all who believe, right? So you cannot make yourself righteous. It's his gift of grace 
that allows us to be righteous, right? He makes us righteous. So the law helps us understand where our actions and thinking fall short of that righteous, right? Since we're not saved by the law, it's okay if we fall short, right? We're allowed to do that. We're allowed to try and to try to follow the law. We're allowed to read and try to understand, right? We're not saved by it. So, okay, so we, so hopefully, I mean, you understand what I'm getting at. So, so how do we apply this, right? How do we apply this idea that the rules in the Bible don't save us? Like, what do we do with the rules in the Bible then? Well, and, and it can be hard to separate ourselves. Like, when I'm working with the teens, if you ask them, how do you go to heaven, more or less all of their answers is, you have to be a good person, and that's a lie. That's not true. And I'm sure many of you maybe, like, think that way too, and that's okay. But if you think that way, it's not like you have a wrong thinking. You're just putting a lot of pressure on yourself that doesn't need to be there. Um, right? That's really what it means. <laughs> you can let go. Right? It is ground into you from the moment that you're able to think that you are supposed to obey God, and if you don't, you're a bad person, and you're going to hell if you fail to obey him, right? Even people who don't like our Christian beliefs, they hold us to that standard too. They'll, like, bring stuff up, like, well, the Bible says this. Why don't you do this? Like, like so, I mean, it is ground into our heads that we have to follow every rule to get to heaven, and that's just not true. Um, we have to put a verse into practice, and this verse that I'm going to read might seem contradictory to what I just said, but it's John 14, 15. It's, if you love me, keep my commandments. So does that Bible verse, does that say, if you want to go to heaven, keep my commandments? No, it's, it, does it say, if you want to be famous, keep my commandments? No, it says, if, does it say, if you want me to bless you, keep my commandments? No. It doesn't say, if you want to be rich, keep my commandments? No. That's, none of that stuff is what God is asking you to do. God is saying, if you love me, I want you to love me. I don't want you to follow the law because you're waiting for your reward. I don't want you to follow the law because you want to go to heaven. I've given you heaven. I've given you your reward. So what does he want? He wants you to love him. The next thing he says in that verse is like after he says, if you love me, follow my commandments, as he says. And what happens? I'll send you the spirit of truth, right? That's what the verse kind of goes on to say. And essentially, he's telling us that he wants to have this relationship with us, right? He wants to send his spirit to be with you and to talk with you, right? To help you get through hard times. That's what he wants. He doesn't care about the commandment itself. I mean, that's what he says. I'm not, he is not pleased by sweet-smelling sacrifices, but by an obedient heart. He wants our love, not just the act itself. So there's no point in just following the law if that's all you're doing. If that's what you think saves you, you're wasting a lot of time. You can relax a little bit. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so the law is still important, though, right? Because we can use the, the Bible to discover the ways of loving God, right? We can use his commandments to uncover how he desires us to live and the kind of relationship that he desires to have with us. The thing is, God has desires. God wants you to be his friend. I mean, he created you, and he created you for the sole purpose that he wanted to. Like, there's no reason for us to exist other than he wanted us to exist. He doesn't need people, but he wanted people. And so we're here. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so, right. So that's all he wants from you. That's all he wants is for you to love him. So the commandments in the Bible teach us how to love God. Um, they teach us how to have the kind of relationship that he wants to have with you. Um, blessings are good, and there's a lot of fun promises in the Bible, right? It says all these things. If you do all this stuff, all, ble well, all that stuff's cool, but I don't really think that's the main point. I think those blessings are the result of having this amazing relationship with God. Because at the end of the day, like, what's better than, like, you could be, you could lose everything. And if you still love God, like, if you know, like, you have a, like, you're happy. 
So at the end of the day, like the blessings and all this stuff are secondary to what God really wants, and he just wants for us to love him. Um, right? Salvation is this amazing gift, and it's, you know, like it's, it's the basis of everything we do, the basis of our belief, the basis of why we try to meet people. But he gives it away for free. And there's nothing to earn. Like our religion is one where there's nowhere to go. Once you're saved, you're done. That's it. There's nothing else to do. So what we need to do is we need to learn to stop reading the Bible as a guide to be perfect and instead use it as a guide to have a relationship with God, right? It's a guide to know <laughs> what he <laughs> desires, um, Right, so you're saved. So now, you, now that you're saved, you actually get to find out who God is. All right, so we need to learn, and we need to learn to be diligent disciples, okay? We need to be students of Jesus. Jesus' disciples called him teacher, right? We need to learn to use discernment and wisdom to understand how we're supposed to live, right? Like, I don't believe the goal of Paul and the other New Testament writers was to create a new set of laws for all of us to live by. Um, like, I don't think that's what they wanted to do. We need to avoid that kind of thinking, that the goal of a Christian is to discover new rules. That's not the goal. Instead, we need to be open to learning who God is and how we can walk with him. And it, this is like, like, more or less, you're going to end up following all the rules. <laughs> and that's the idea, right, is we want to follow the rules that God's given us, but not out of fear but because as we learn to follow them, we discover we walk closer with him. Um, for those of us who have been baptized in the spirit, like we may not feel like we have a hard time feeling close to God or learning how to love him. It's, but it's still important to be a diligent disciple, even if we have that connection to the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit's gifts often lead us back into the Bible and back to the law. And we need to have a good grasp of the Bible and of the law, and of the things being taught in there, so we can more fully understand what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us. Um, otherwise, we might get really confused, and we might, we may not, we may miss, like, revelation that he wants to give us. So, so, so that's, that's, that's talking about the law, right? Um, if you're not saved by it, why is it there? The law is there to teach you how to have a relationship with God, to teach you what God is like. All right. So now we're going to talk about the first, the, the, other, the other way of taking grace, which is, I think, the more complicated conundrum in our heads, okay? So, um, and that is the idea, it does not matter what I do, God will always forgive me. And so what, we'll, what I'll start with saying, ultimately, it's really up to each person what they're going to believe. Um, whether you actually have faith in God is up to you. Um, I'm not saying, like, be afraid, but really what I'm saying is, right, like, if, if um, we can't judge people for doing things that we think they shouldn't do. And so that isn't really a condemnation on someone doing something and feeling judged. That's a condemnation, not a condemnation. That's a don't judge people because you think they're not going to be saved. Um, because the fact is, if they say they believe in Jesus and they say they believe he rose and he died and rose again, that he has forgiven their sins, um, then they're saved, right? That's, that's the only thing we have to go off of. We don't have anything else. So, so, we, and if you, so we have to kind of get out of that thinking, first off, that, because it's confusing because of this, okay? It is a true statement that no matter what you do, God will always forgive you. It has to be true, because if it's not, then grace isn't, doesn't exist. Like, it's not a free thing. You have to earn it now. So it has to be true. Um, that said... Um, I think it's possible that someone could accept God's grace and ignore his commands. I think it's unlikely that that would happen, though, right? There's probably not many people in the world that would live that way because for most of us, or many of us at least, the reason we accepted God's grace, part of it came with the realization that the way of doing whatever we want, that was a terrible way to live. So, I mean, so ultimately, right, it's, so it's possible, but I mean, when you really stop and think about it practically, the way m God comes to most of us is making us see that isn't the right way to live. So it's not really, I think, a scenario we need to worry about too much, but, but it is something to think about. I think what, what really what we need to think about is this. 
um, that even though most of us may not live in a way where we do whatever we want and everything, I think we do come to that conclusion on different topics. Each one of us, can de we decide for ourselves, I don't think this matters. I'm willing to get forgiven for that later, I'll, but I'll follow this law. We all pick and choose what we're going to be forgiven for. And I think that is the more, the, the, the more thing that we all deal with rather than the other scenario, which I think people often worry about, which is, but so the scenario we need to worry about is this. One person might not care about drugs that much. They're still going to heaven if they do drugs. That's true. But they tithe every week and they believe it's a sin not to. So even, so they think other people are sinning because they're not tithing. Another person might literally hate their neighbor and believe they are justified and right. And here's the fact is that person's still going to heaven, even though they actually hate their neighbor. Like we'll even say their literal neighbor. Um, but they believe that another person having sex outside of marriage is going to send them to hell. Um, right? The, the thing is, both of these people are going to heaven because if they believe it. And that's a confusing thought. Um, that someone who believes something that most of us might say is not right would still go. But that's what grace is. It isn't about being fair. It isn't about, it's just there. It's just there. Um, so, right, that's how most of us put this version of grace into practice. We like to give ourselves grace to pick and choose what parts of the law we want to follow. And I think... We should be exceptionally grateful for grace in this context because despite our inconsistent thinking and despite the fact that we choose to break the law, we choose to disobey, there's still grace given. Um, and does that mean we should let ourselves believe whatever we want then? No. That, like, even practically, that doesn't make sense because how many crazy things have you learned that isn't like from the Bible? Like How many things... As a relative or a teacher or a friend or a stranger teach you growing up, right? We've learned so many crazy things that have nothing even close to do with the Bible. So we really just can't trust everything that's in our heads. Um, but, um, right, right, we need to kind of sort through what is from God and what is just old prideful thinking um, that's fighting the truth, right? So, I mean, so this kind of comes back to being a diligent disciple. Like I said, this is, I think, the harder one to kind of explain because... Um, essentially, we have all these beliefs in our head, and every one of us believes one thing is right and another thing is wrong, and we disagree, um, and this is where grace comes in, right? Um, it, ultimately, we all are wrong in some areas, and grace is why we can still go to heaven, even though we make these mistakes of thinking. Um, if we go back to the verse before, what is the purpose of the law in a Christian life? We talked about that a second ago, which is through the law, we become conscious of our sin, right? So we may feel like we've been doing this Christian thing for a really long time now, some of us. Some of us are maybe newer. But, and so some of us may think we get the gist, we get the idea, right? We don't really need to study the law anymore. Like you may have this idea of grace. You're like, well, I get it. I'm pretty much good. I got all my ducks in a row. Like, you know that you're allowed to eat pork and, like, shellfish, and, like, there's, like, smoking and drinking is a little debatable. Uh, you know you're supposed to avoid sex outside of marriage. So you think you're probably good to go, right? Um, and so we're no longer studying because we know we have grace. We know we have grace, so we stop studying. Um, and we can get so set in what we believe is right and wrong that we, kind of, like, we don't really feel a need to be a disciple anymore. We just take our grace, and we're good. Like we're, but we have to always be diligent disciples, right? We're always going to discover things with our thinking that don't line up with God's righteousness, right? We're always going to encounter new situations that we never encountered before where we discover, oh, I'm actually not as strong as I thought. Um, we need to be ready and willing to confront the craziness that's in our own heads and fix the craziness that we cause around us, right? We need to accept that we can be wrong despite having been saved for X amount of years. Um, and maybe like you've had like regular encounters with the Holy Spirit. And 
just because sometimes you're wrong, it doesn't invalidate your experience. It doesn't invalidate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's what grace is. Grace means you can still be wrong sometimes, and God still loves you the same. It, it, the Holy Spirit chooses to have encounters with you. You don't conjure him. He's chosen to have encounters with you despite the fact that you have so much stuff in your head that's wrong. I mean, and, and I think that's like, like and, and, and just because you make a mistake, like you don't have to work. Um, wait, I kind of got lost there. Right? Anyway. <laughs> so, right, like the Holy Spirit and all these things, it's the only way that we can come to God is through his grace because he's chosen to just forgive you. And so um, the grace of God is what allows you to even begin down the road of becoming like Christ. Right? So we need to not be prideful that we know what is the right way to live. Um, we need to not be prideful that thinking from our old life, thinking that maybe helped us survive before, thinking that made us strong before, that we don't let that, what we know worked before, stop us from learning, well, what's a new way that God wants us to think? But the thing is, even if you fail to learn that new way, there's grace for you. So, <laughs> right? So we need, to con well, we need to not become so content with the way that we're living that we stop seeking God, but we need to continue to seek God. So there's so many amazing things to discover in this life, and we don't have to wait till we're dead before we see his kingdom. And grace in this life is the only way we can see his kingdom now. So as just a summary of what we talked about here, just um, as you're going through your life, um, as you worry about, you know, sin, as you worry about failing, just pause, you know, ask for forgiveness. But at the same time, know that, that you're saved. And allow that truth to change the way that you think. Allow that truth to change the way that you interact with others. Because the fact is you are saved, and then that other person in church who you don't like is saved too. Um, I mean, and, and allow that truth to change the way you treat them. That if you really allow yourself to believe that you are both saved, well, how does that change? You don't need to fix yourself. You don't need to fix others. Allow the Holy Spirit to do that. You don't need to be perfect. Anyway, so I think that's it. Uh, you want me to play us out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know... That's my son. <laughs> oh! I don't want to brag, but I'm so proud of my son. Amen. Amen. Quadruple threat. I think he just went up another level. Okay, we're going to work out what kind of threat this guy is. He's probably coming for my job. <laughs> Jesus, sweet Jesus. <laughs> I'll come back and uh, just pray us out.
All right, I'm going to pray us out. I love you guys so much. Um, make sure you're with us for prayer tomorrow, 6 o'clock. And um, disciples, Zooming on Saturday and live streaming Sunday. And Monday we'll find out what we're going to be doing, if we're going to be doing anything different. But, um, uh, Lord, we just thank you for... Um, for the word tonight, Father, we thank you for the revelation that we can't earn our salvation. That even though we may stumble and fall, God, we st you still love us. That nothing can separate us from the, from the love of God, nor height, nor depth. And somehow, Lord, we don't understand that. We... We don't have that capability to love like you love. So, Father, I pray for our church, God. I pray for those who are struggling or feel unworthy or feel like they're sinning and feel like they can't do this. I just pray, God, you give them a revelation of 
how much you love them and all you're asking is for them to love you. You're not asking them to do this, do this. You just want us to love you, to fellowship with you. Amazing. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys.